Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Jackie. Welcome back to another video. So for this week's video, I'm bringing you guys a very exciting one. I'm going to be finally showing you guys how I edit using Final Cut Pro here. I have used this editing software for the last two months now, and I've definitely got the hang of it well enough to show you guys if you're a beginner at how to use this editing software. I definitely have utilized all the beginners tips and tricks, and I'm going to show you guys all of those in this video. I've been using this software for around two months now. My first video edited on this was actually my closet clean out quarantine edition. If you guys want to go check that out, I'm going to link that up here for you guys. So I have a pretty good idea on everything that I can do on this editing software and I'm just going to show you guys everything I have done because I definitely love the way that I edit my videos and if you guys learn a thing or two and want to implement to your videos, I'll be more than happy to show you guys how to. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys everything from how to import your footage to effects like hens burns, titles, generators, whatever that is, and transitions that I like to implement into my videos. So without any further ado, let me you guys wait any longer. Let's go ahead and just jump right into this video. All right, you guys, so if you probably know and you have seen from my other videos, I do edit all my videos on Final Cut Pro, obviously, but on that, I don't edit directly on my laptop. And when I'm saying that, I'm basically saying that I edit on an external hard drive. This is going to be your best friend if your laptop doesn't have a lot of space like mine. So my laptop itself has around 128 gigabytes on it solely. And Final Cut Pro takes up a lot of space. So if you have a laptop that has around the same amount of storage, I would definitely recommend investing in a Lacey external hard drive or any hard drive of the sort. I know that there is plenty on Amazon that are similar to this one. I do have the 1000 gigabyte Lacey external hard drive, which means it is a terabyte. But this is an amazing product here, and I love that you can edit videos directly on this without affecting the storage of your computer at all. So definitely recommend this. But since I'm talking about my external hard drive, I do want to show you guys what is on my external hard drive because I do keep all of my YouTube content on there, and I don't really touch it for anything else. So opening up my external hard drive, this is what we look like here. So I do have a couple of folders just labeled out with my little star PNGs, which I showed you guys in my MacBook unboxing video. If you guys want to go check it out, I'll link it up here for you guys, but I did have this on my folder. So starting off from the beginning, I have my intro slash outro folder. And this basically just holds my intro and outro, obviously, and it just makes it easier to import to each project that I do make on Final Cut Pro. And if you don't know what project means, I'll show you guys that in a second. And then here I have my YouTube extras, which is just a couple of things that I use for transitions, which I'll also show you a little later, and also just my phone PNG that I'll actually show you how I put onto my videos. So that's in there. And then I have my YouTube music folder and it just holds all the tracks that I put on the back of my YouTube videos, like the one you're listening to right now and everything else like montage music and everything of the sorts. Might wanna organize this a little bit better, but that's kind of how I have it right now. And then I have my exported folder and this is just where I keep the project that I recently exported. This is my last video right here. It's my equipment video. If you wanna go check it out, I'll link it up here for you guys. It's just my most recent video. So that is in there. And then I have my how I edit folder and this is basically where I'm gonna keep all the footage that I'm filming right this second. So that's just in here. Then I have my video equipment folder, which is just the folder that holds all the footage of my last video. And in here I have separate folders. They're kind of all over the place. Sorry about that. But I have my B-roll folder here, which I actually didn't end up using any of these clips, but just in case I do. And this will just be putting footage over the other, which I'll show you a little later. Then I have my footage folder, which is just all the base footage. And then my thumbnail folder, which just holds the video that I have of me posing for a thumbnail. So that's in there. And then I have my sound effects folder and I only hold two things in here which I know is a little like small but to be honest I don't use a lot of sound effects but I have just the mouse click sound effect and then the cassette insert sound effect here and then here is just the footage that I have that I'm going to be using for my test video which is actually just footage from the last video I filmed so that's in there and then here are just a couple of Final Cut Pro things and for example right here this is just the library for my editing on my Lacey which I'll show you what that means in a little bit so that's basically everything on my external hard drive pretty simple and I don't like to keep it really cluttered at all so that is that and now actually moving along into what you wanted to see in this video it's my how I edit portion so moving along into the actual editing software I have my Final Cut Pro obviously right here so opening this up I'm showing you guys how I import footage so first things first I have to open up the library because this entitled library here is just a library that is used for when I want to edit on my computer but obviously I want to edit using my external hard drive so I'm gonna go up into here click file open library and I already made my external hard drive library that automatically just has everything being edited on my external hard drive. If you guys want to see how to do that, I'll link a video down below that actually showed me how to do it. So that is that. But moving along into here, into this project, this is my test video project that I actually used when I was trying to film this video. Believe it or not, I tried filming this video already, but I hated the way it turned out. So we're not going to end up using this folder. I'm going to make a new one. So how I do that is by going up to my touch bar here. And my touch bar is 
that's really helpful when it comes to editing my videos. If you guys don't have a touch bar though and just have the MacBook Pros with that one, I'll leave a link down below into a website that shows you all like the keys that are pretty similar to the ones on the touch bar because I don't have like all those F1, F2 keys on there. So I'm gonna mainly be using my touch bar, but if you wanna get a similar sense of what to do, I'll leave the link down below and you can go check that out. But I'm gonna go ahead and click new event here. And when I do that, it just pops up this little thing here and I'm gonna go ahead and name this test video number two. In here, you can automatically click create new project and that will open up a new project for you automatically without having to click the new project key on the keyboard. So that is that. And now when we open that up, it brings you to a whole new timeline for all the videos. And when I open up this folder, this is basically where all the footage for my test video is going to be. So to import footage into this, I'm gonna go ahead and click Command I and that is going to open up this entire folder of everything on my external hard drive or if I wanna look up stuff on my laptop, I can go ahead and just go through these. But I'm using, once again, footage downloaded onto my external hard drive. So going down into my test video folder here, everything is pretty much open so that's why it looks kind of messy. But I'm gonna go ahead and import these items. So since there are two items I wanna import, in order to click multiple items instead of going back into Command I and just going back and forth, I'm gonna go ahead and click one of the videos, press on Command and hold on to it, click the other video, and that automatically selects multiple videos for you. It's pretty much how like the control key works on non-Apple products, but this is just the command one. So now to go ahead and import stuff, you can click import selected, or if doing a strip from the keyboard, which is quite honestly the easiest, I'm gonna click return, and that goes ahead and imports everything. So now we have all the footage on here, and now to enter footage into my timeline, I'm gonna go ahead and just select on the video, that's a bad shot, but, and when you're always selecting the first thing, it's just gonna highlight the entire footage from that video onto it, so that's pretty awesome. So now, holding on to the trackpad, I'm gonna hold on to that and drag that into my timeline here. And there we go, and now we have the video in our timeline for a full 18 minutes. And obviously, I'm not gonna go ahead and edit this since this video is already edited, but I am gonna show you all the tips and tricks that I use using this footage. So, like I said, we have all the footage in here now. And now, you can go ahead and go along the timeline by clicking the right and left buttons on here on your keyboard, and this just allows you to go frame by frame. And also, how to go to the beginning or end of a clip, clicking the up key, it's gonna bring you to the beginning of a clip. Clicking the down key is gonna bring you to the bottom and end of a clip. So that's pretty awesome. A little easy trick in case you wanna go to the end of a clip without just going frame by frame or sliding along your trackpad to do so. So I'm gonna go and click up and we're gonna start at the beginning. Usually what I do to find the beginning of a video is play it a little. And now where I hit around where I wanna begin the video, I'm gonna go ahead and just maybe do a frame over by clicking the right key. And then I'm gonna click this key on my trackpad, which just says start here basically. I don't really don't know what the exact terminology is of it, but basically it means start from that clip. So now we have the first chunk of the clip cut off easily. So now I'm gonna go to click this. Hey guys. I'm gonna click the space bar so and I'm gonna go long. We'll go back to another video. And then where I have a portion of me not speaking or like breathing or something, I usually wanna cut that out because it does run into the time of the actual video, obviously. So to cut a little portion of the video out, you're gonna go ahead and hold on to Command, you're gonna click B, and that is going to trim the video and just slice that piece in half. I'm gonna go ahead and play it, see where I start talking again, and then I click the Start Here button, and this just makes it flow so much easier like this. Another video, so for this video, so for this week's video, I'm so you can see here, I have a little spot of not speaking, but it is really tiny, so I wanna be exact and precise. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom the timeline in so I get a better trim and slice. So holding on to Command, I'm gonna go ahead and click the plus button here a couple times and the more you click it the more it's gonna get bigger and easier for you to see and when you click the minus button obviously it's gonna make the timeline shorter and smaller let's say I want my video to end right here but I don't want to go through the act of slicing it and then deleting the rest of the clip if you want to make it a little easier on yourself probably gonna take one second less than doing the alternative you're gonna go ahead and click the button on your touch bar that says end here and that is basically where the entire clip is going to end. So as you can see, now we have just this video that I am going to edit. When I hit that point of having my rough cut of the video over with, I add some transitions, just for a little bit of spice and a better flow between videos. So the first one I'm gonna show you guys is my glitch transition. And this one is pretty simple. Starting off at the midpoint between clips, as you can see right here, I'm gonna go ahead and do two frames over, Command B, two frames to the left, just to start the midpoint once again. And then I go two frames to the left once again, Command B. Now to add that glitch effect, I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down into the effects here and I'm gonna go to bad TV. This is an effect that a lot of YouTubers use, to be honest. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold onto bad TV to drag this in and I basically just place it onto those two middle clips. 
And now, once those are in, I'm going to show you guys what the little glitch effect looks like. So for this week's video, I'm bringing you guys a... And now to show you the effect that I use when I'm typically going from my outro into the main parts of a video. And that is my cassette tape type of transition. So this does require a screen recording of a video from YouTube that I'll actually link down below for you guys. It is actually located in my YouTube extras little part of my external hard drive. And to have that sound effect of going from the intro to the main part of the video, I have my cassette insert sound effect that I'll actually also link down below for you guys to check out and then here I have those two clips in my library so to add this transition here I just drag this cassette part in here and then I usually determine the length of the transition off of the sound effect so here as you can see is basically where the sound effect ends and begins that's what the sound effect sounds like. So dragging the sound effect into here, I go ahead and just drag that in. And then I can shorten this by just holding onto the trackpad and then moving this thing to the right. And that shortens it from the beginning. And now that I want to just cut that off there, I'm actually going to hold onto my trackpad, drag down, and then this selects both clips for you. And this just makes it so much easier when you're trying to cut a clip in a sound effect or a clip on a clip. So now click on to my end here button. It shortens that perfectly for you. And just so that my clip isn't just immediately jumping into the transition once again I add my bad TV effect and here we have a smoother clip and what I'm talking as you can see, that flows a lot more better and obviously it doesn't look as good right now because it isn't going from the intro to the actual video. And those are the transitions I really use in my YouTube video. I really like to be simple with my transitions and I don't use a whole lot. So once I add my transitions in, I go ahead and use things like Ken's Burns and Crop to Fill. This is my Ken Burn effect. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and go to a part of a video where I want to just slowly zoom into my face. Let's say I wanna do it right here. I'm gonna do Command B. Go to the end where I want to stop zooming in. Command B. And there we go. So now I have the clip that I want to use for my Ken's Burns. So going into this little thing here, it has transform, crop, and distort. For doing the Ken's Burns effect, you go ahead and just go into crop. And this has a couple of choices for you. So it has trim, crop, and Ken's Burns. What I'm going to show you right now is the Ken's Burns. So for Ken's Burns, typically it just has the start and the end. So it's really pretty much self-explanatory. Go ahead and do that. Click done. That's what it looks like. And there we go, just a slow little zoom into the face. You can make it as zoomed in or as zoomed out as you want. If you want to start closer and farther, go ahead and just click this little reverse button and it does that for you, simple. And as you can see, it just zooms out of my face. So that's pretty awesome. And now I just do the little crops like this when I want sort of a part of the video to be a little more eye-catching. I go ahead and go to another part of the video where I want to do that. Command B, Command B. And now, same thing, go into the crop one once again. Click crop, and then crop the video in as much as you want. Crop it, and there we go. And that's just the easiest ways I've found to do Ken's Burns and Crop. Once I use things like Ken's Burns and Crop, I go ahead and add in a little bit of effects. So I'm gonna go over a couple of effects that I use mainly on my videos, obviously. Of course, Bad TV is the top contender I use this for a whole lot of parts of my videos. And then I use H Film sometimes. This one is pretty self explanatory, to be honest. This is what it looks like. So you can just add this sort of oldie look. And I would usually use this for like little montages. And if you wanna take an effect off, pretty simple. You just go ahead and click the check mark and it takes it off for you. Another effect I like to use sometimes when I'm doing a recording on my laptop and putting it to the video, like me editing, is the camcorder. This one is pretty cool too. So it just adds on a little effect like a camcorder. Just shows the recording thing. I really like this one. What I didn't know at first is that you could change the text. So you can change it to whatever you would like. Another one I use if I want to censor something out is obviously the censor. So this one's pretty cool because you can do the amount of censor you want, like so. You can change the size of it, but also another way you can do it is just by zooming this in and out like so. Another one I recently just dipped into is this effect right here. This is the frame effect. And this one's pretty cute. It makes a clip look super vintagey kind of. I use this mainly for montages once again. And the last effect that I've dipped into for my videos is this 360 channel blur effect. So dragging that in, it's just a whole blur on the video. It just takes a little part of a video and blurs it out. So it's kind of just pulling out different colors for that. That's an effect I also go into. And typically that channel blur one is when I do use b-roll on my videos as you can see in this little clip right here. So now I want to show you guys how I put a video on top of another video. So going into my library here, I'm going to go ahead 
and scroll down to this footage right here. Just select it, drag that onto the trackpad like so. And there we have that. And now I'm just gonna cut it where I want it to be cut, like so. And then end here button. And then usually when I use B-roll and clips on top of the other clips, I go ahead and just turn down the volume. So that's basically just how you add a clip on top of another one. Pretty simple. So clicking onto that and how I implement my channel blur into B-roll is by obviously cropping this video. So I'm gonna crop this a little bit like so. I just crop it a little bit. Typically what I do is around 88, just so that you have that nice fine border. Now I'm gonna drag 360 channel blur into here and boom, as you can see, it looks pretty freaking rad. And now I'm gonna real quick show you guys how I add my little phone onto the screen like you saw at the beginning of this video. So go ahead and hold onto command I, opening up my external hard drive. I'm gonna scroll down into YouTube extras. So I have here just a screen recording of my phone on Instagram, which is typically the social media I like to put out there. And then I click this little transparent that I found online of my phone. I have the iPhone 8 Plus, so I just looked up a transparent of that. Really just varies on which phone you have though. So then I click return, and then both of those are implemented into the library. So first one I'd like to do and insert is just the actual Instagram footage. So I'm gonna go to insert that like so. Obviously I don't want it blocking like my face straight on like that, but I do wanna add something else on there. So scrolling down into the phone PNG, I just drag that in and you wanna drag that in on top of the screen recording. And that's mainly because you can easily fit the screen recording better into the phone that way. And now I'm gonna fit the screen recording into the iPhone. So clicking on just the screen recording, I'm gonna click the transform button, zoom and crop it into the phone PNG. There you can see it looks pretty realistic. Now holding on to both of the clips, I'm gonna go ahead and click transform once again. And this is gonna go ahead and just allow me to manipulate this without manipulating them individually. So now I can go ahead and just make this smaller, but I typically just like to go like 86 on here, scroll to the left, and I like to make sure this is right in the middle of the frame just because it looks the best. And actually, Let's zoom this up a little bit. So 93. There we are. There we have it. Once again, I like to use Bad TV to transition this in. And I feel like it looks so sick. Like, I'm going to show you guys this, actually. If I hold on to both clips, it goes ahead and cuts it for me. And I'm going to click Bad TV, drag it into each individual clip. And as you can see, we'll go back to it. It glitches in pretty cool. So that is basically how I add that phone effect onto my videos. And now, segueing from that, I'm going to show you guys actually how I use text and generators on my videos. So for text, I'm just going to show you straight up on here. Going into titles, Final Cut Pro applies you with so many titles, but I'm super basic, so I just use the basic title right here, and I just drag that up on top of the phone. I'm going to show you guys a couple of titles that I use on my videos. So I use basic title, and then I use the typewriter title right here, which is just types each individual letter for you. So those are really just the titles I use. I don't really dip into any other ones. So now we have the title on top of the clip as well. And I'm actually gonna show you guys the fonts that I use. So typically I'll go into Helvetica New here and this supplies me with so many fonts. So the ones I usually like to go into is my light italic one here, medium italic, and bold italic. As you can see, I really like the italics. I don't know, I just feel like it makes text look so much more classy and I really like that. So for this, I'm gonna go ahead and click medium italic because that's typically the one I use for my Instagram username. Then you can type something here. The other font I usually like to dip into is another basic one that I feel like a lot of YouTubers use. And that is a Synchro LET font. This one is so flipping cool. I really like this one. Okay, but anyways, so those are the two main fonts that I use. What I like to do with my text is track it. So that basically just means the space between each letter. So you can make that bigger, which I typically do. And it just looks so much more aesthetically pleasing to be honest. Now scrolling down into how I change the color of a text. At first I was really confused about this too. So here you go to face and this basically is just the color of the text. So going ahead to here, this just has all the colors. As you can see, I like to color pull. So I like to pull different colors from my actual footage to implement. So how to do that is just click the little dropper tool and that lets you go into here and click what color you wanna do. It zooms it in really finely. Like let's say I wanna do that pink. Boom, I have the pink on my text now. And then if you wanna just save that pink for future use, you can go ahead and just click on the trackpad on the color, drag that into here and boom, it's a preset color now. And then you can change the opacity of the text obviously by changing it right here. So now I really like to add a drop shadow just to make the text pop more. So clicking the check mark here, I'm going to go ahead and just make the opacity 100. That's typically what I do. And then you can make the distance even farther or closer if you would like. And you can just simply move the text by clicking onto the text part of the video and then just dragging along the screen if you would like. So that's how I do that. And that's typically how I do text. And then obviously we're going to just chop it up at the end of that part. Clicking the end here button. Next thing I want to touch on in this video 
is how I use generators. I just want to show you how I put colors on my videos and how I do those little cool transitions directly on a clip. So for example, I'm going to go to the beginning of this clip. So now to add a color on top of a clip, I typically use the 360 degree color solid. And this just allows me to pick any color that I want to add on top of a video. So going right here, just color, you can change the color that you want through here. Let's say I want to do that pink. And now to actually make your video and footage visible through there, you're going to to click this little button here. And this allows you to change the opacity. So you can go ahead and just change that lower and boom, you kind of have an instant filter on your video. This is typically what I like to use for my topics in a video. So that's pretty awesome. There's a lot you can do with generators, but that's really just what I use it for. And then typically what you guys will see, I'm just going to drag this over here, is just the text with a synchro LET right over that. So typically what I do with this one is change this here, go into face, make this one white, and then boom, that's how I add that on there. It looks so sick. Real quick, next thing I want to touch on is just how I add my music and that one sound effect for my phone into this. So holding up to command I, I'm going to go ahead and import my sound effects slash music for the video. So I'm going to go ahead and click mouse click. This is another one that I downloaded from YouTube. I'll link that down below for you guys to go check out. This is just a sound effect I use when I want something to pop up or out of my videos. And let's just insert a song. Let's use Summer Whisper here by Tumpa Beats. Now I have both sound effects imported into my library. So how I added the mouse click is pretty simple. Once again, just like the cassette one, shorten it. Then boom. And just because I don't want it to overpower my voice, I'm gonna go ahead and shorten this a little bit lower by like negative three decibels. And then go back to it. That's pretty cool. And now when I add music, I go to the beginning of the clip, obviously after my intro, then go to the music here, and I'm just gonna go to Summer Whisper. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just drag this in as usual. And as you can see, it overpowers my voice a lot. So how I make that not do that is just turn down the volume once again. So typically for these, I'll just turn it down by like 15. It really just depends on the actual volume of the song. But now it sounds a little bit better. So sound, listen to this. No, stuff in this so for this week's video, I'm bringing you guys a very... So there we are. Doesn't overpower my voice at all. Finally, because I've been filming for 40 minutes, the last thing I want to touch on is how I add an overall filter to my entire video. As you've been seeing in this video, it already has a filter on it, but I'm going to just take it off for now just so I can show you guys. So I actually learned how to do this through a YouTuber here named Hannah Elise on YouTube. I'll link her video down below. It was super helpful, and I feel like just showed everyone how most of the YouTubers have been doing it. So I'm going to go to link that down below for you guys, but once you have that downloaded, because it is a an external thing you have to download onto your application. Don't worry, it's completely free. But once you have that downloaded, it's gonna go ahead and be located in your titles. This will make a lot more sense after you see that video, so definitely recommend checking that out right now. But then I have just my base correction and look grade. I don't use base correction at all, to be honest. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drag the look grade into my video as if it was anything like a title or an additional clip on top. So here we have it. As you can see, it doesn't affect anything at all right now, and that's because you haven't added a color onto it. So how to do that is by dragging this thing named color wheel into the look grade. So once you have that look grade in, you can go ahead and just select look grade, and this is where you can change the entire coloring of this video. And since it is over all of the clips, it's gonna affect all of them, and you don't have to worry about fixing each individual clip because I feel like that would take forever, and nobody has time for that. I actually did end up using Kenna Murray here on YouTube's colors that she uses for her videos and I'll link that down below for you guys to go check out. Her Hiya Edit video was absolutely amazing. I went ahead and just installed that for myself. So dragging that in, I'm going to just put this onto here and boom, that changed the entire color of this video. And the settings I have that set to is just for the master, I have 158 degrees set at negative 24%. For shadows, I have 192 degrees set at 49%. For midtones, I have 37 degrees set at 52%. And for highlights, I have 315 degrees set at negative 14. And it makes the video look so much more professional and I definitely love the way that it looks on my videos. So how you save that to use for future reference is just by holding to this save effect preset and you can set it anywhere you would like but then you go ahead and just select as stretch to fit just because it's going to stretch over the entire thing and you can save it here to effects and color board one so you don't have to keep changing that every single time you just drag that effect in and boom you're all set but with that that's basically everything that i do to edit my videos i hope you guys enjoyed learning about everything that i use for editing my videos on final cut pro this is everything that i used from the rough cut all the way to the nitty gritties i hope you guys enjoyed and learned a thing or two on this video i know there's a lot of information thrown at you at once but definitely you can just look back at this video whenever you're editing to just get a little reminder. If you guys enjoyed, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe down below for new videos every single week. I love to put out content for you guys and I really hope you guys can support me when I do so. So I love you guys so, 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 so much. I'll link everything that I said in the description down below. I'll see you guys next time. Bye cuties.